Have you ever been in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your manager and wondered, why am I here? In this video, we're going to discuss what a good one-on-one -on -one meeting should look like. In a recent video on conversation conversations, we discussed how one-on-ones with your manager provide a smoother road to salary and promotion negotiations. Regular one-on-one -on -one meetings between managers and their direct reports builds trust and helps build a mutually beneficial working relationship. Unfortunately, you're often thrown into these with little information and it can lead to an awkward 30 minutes once a week and a waste of a great opportunity. So let's change that. In this video, we'll talk about what a good one-on-one -on -one looks like, building trust, awkwardness, and being prepared. We'll also look at some discussion topics, making space and taking notes. So what does a good one-on-one -on -one look like? At its core, it's just a conversation between two people, but it's not just a conversation. There are a mix of structure and no structure, a little bit like one of those conferences you go to where there's scheduled talks and then breakout sessions for more informal discussions afterwards. Ideally, they're a place where you can talk privately without anyone hearing. While we're all brought up to think secrets and whispering are bad, I found one-on-ones where the walls are paper thin are really unproductive. Every one-on-one -on -one is different. People are very complex, and when you put more than one person together, that's gonna get more complex. Even if the people are the same, each meeting will likely be different. What you discuss each week will depend on where you are in your relationship with your manager, where you are in your career, and what is the most important thing to be discussing this week. Figuring that out is a key purpose of a one-on-one. -on -one. It will also depend on what you discussed last week or if there's anything in the news, such as promotions, hopefully yours, or restructuring, people leaving, or what the CEO just announced. Also, your manager might want to discuss what's coming up, such as hiring, planning. Planning is not good to discuss in one-on-ones particularly. Or pet talks, such as we've got 10 days to the end of the quarter and let's all go for it. Obviously, you can see I'm not very good at pep talks. Beyond the things you plan to talk about and you can easily quantify in the list, there's a lot of things that require trust to be established first. These are more personal conversations, the getting to know each other, that can start simply as what are you doing on the weekend? How far you go with these conversations depends on trust, but also how much you actually want to share with your manager. You might find it helpful to share more personal information, such as medical or family issues, but that's totally up to you. But you should only do this if you trust your manager and you think it would give them more context to be able to help you. Other times where building up trust is important is having situations where maybe you felt uncomfortable and you want to raise them with your manager. Or if you want to get clarification on rumors you've heard on the grapevine or the water cooler or wherever people hear rumors these days. Slack, TikTok. All these things are things that you definitely do not need to discuss with your manager. Managers should never push for personal information or anything that's unrelated to your work but you should be given the opportunity and the environment to discuss these things if you think these conversations are important. Your manager should also assume that there's things you don't feel comfortable talking to them about and provide you with additional options, such as talking to human resources, talking to your manager's manager, or talking to other managers. Just because this person is your manager doesn't mean they're the best person to have every conversation with. Building trust with your manager just takes time. At first, even the most mundane conversation might feel awkward. That's why it's important to have these meetings every week. Initially, your manager will just be an unknown entity, but eventually you'll get to know your manager, just like you will with other parts of your job. I know from personal experience, when you don't have trust in these meetings, at best, they can be a waste of time and boring. Why am I here? And at worst, there can be distrust. Why are they asking me this? And every conversation needs to be navigated so as not to make a misstep. Trust is something I think is the number one ingredient to most things in life, as it's the underpinning to good human relationships, and it's required whether you're buying something at Amazon or having a conversation one-to-one. -one. Until we build up some level of trust, conversations are just gonna be awkward. So let's talk about awkwardness. Awkwardness, it happens, it's okay. We're all human, even your manager. And it's quite natural to feel awkward, especially if you have an engineering background, as I think most engineers feel a little bit awkward having one-on-one -on -one conversations with their manager. I think it's useful to acknowledge there's gonna be awkwardness and build the agenda around that. Too much agenda is gonna make the meeting feel too formal, and it's gonna be very hard to break out of that later. If you don't have enough agenda, the silence could be deafening, and that 30 minutes could be a really long time. For instance, how's it going? Tell me more. What else? While it's good for your manager to free up some space to find out what's in your mind, it's not good to free up so much space that you feel like you're drowning in it. Unless you're an extrovert who loves to talk, 
and I don't know many engineers that kind of fall into that category. One way to reduce awkwardness is being a bit prepared going into the meeting. Most of your team probably aren't that familiar with one-on-ones. From my experience, most companies don't do one-on-ones and those that do don't prepare their managers well enough. Most simply say, make sure that you do one-on-ones with your team. With a regular turnover of engineers and managers, there's probably someone every few weeks or few months that's never done a one-on-one -on -one before and doesn't know what they're getting themselves into. It's important to know what a one-on-one -on -one should look like before you go into the meeting. And the fact that you're watching this video is definitely good. If you're enjoying this video and you think it would be useful to somebody else, please give me a thumbs up down below. Thanks. Some other resources I like on one-on-ones is Julia Evans' What to Talk About in One-on-ones, Camille Fournier's book, The Manager's Path, also talks a lot about one-on-ones and is really useful even if you have no aspirations to become a manager. I recommend everyone read it. Whichever side of the one-on-one -on -one meeting you're on, I think it's useful to go into the meeting with a few topics to discuss, but just a few that cover a portion of the meeting and then leave the rest for discussion. Aim to fill the rest of the meeting with more exploratory questions, but don't plan these questions, just let them come naturally. So let's look at some of the discussion topics you could be bringing to the meeting or that could happen more naturally. These can be brought by either you or your manager and I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about how you can actually own the meeting a little bit more and what the benefits of that are. The simplest way to start the meeting is just how's it going? This could be personally for you at work. It could be how is it going with you and your team? How do you think the team is doing? How do you think our team is working with other teams or how are you working with other teams? Or just how is life going in general? You might also focus on some goals and discuss those at regular intervals, such as career goals, short, long-term, or life goals outside of work. You might also have team goals or company goals that you want to discuss. The next level requires a little bit more trust. It's asking for opinion on what you think, what you think about what you're working on and what the team's working on, what the company mission is, or maybe it's about how our team prioritizes our work. With goals, it sometimes requires a few discussions to form them into something concrete. And once you have them, you wanna use your one-on-ones to track those goals and regularly discuss them and review where you're at. One-on-ones are a great opportunity to get advice from your manager who probably has a lot more experience than you. This usually comes naturally when you have more trust and you understand each other a little bit better and what advice would be appropriate. A good manager will make the advice timely and relevant to you and where you're at now. But it might be hard for your manager to figure out what advice you need right now. So it's good to ask for advice at any opportunity you see. One-on-ones are a great time to give and receive feedback. And this is a large topic unto itself. But briefly, it's definitely good to give constructive feedback. For me personally, I like to focus on the positives rather than the negatives. Look at what they're doing well and try and get them to do more of that rather than focus on the negatives and trying to get them to change their behavior, which often doesn't go very well and doesn't build trust. That said, if there is negative behavior that's affecting other people or the business, then that does need to be addressed in one-on-ones. So let's talk about making space. If you're a manager watching this, then you should be continually looking for opportunities to make space for discussions to flourish. Just wait and see where the conversation goes. Also as a manager, it's good to ask for feedback there's no such thing as a perfect manager and we're all here to learn. If someone vents their frustration during the meeting, let them do that, give them some space. They'll feel better, you might learn something and it'll build some trust between you. Try to get to the underlying issues. I hate my job is not a reason and it's not something you can help with. If you're familiar with five whys, try using those skills to get to the underlying reason about why they're not happy with something. It's not always the thing that appears on the surface. I think it's good to have a shared Google Doc to keep track of the meeting, but should you take your laptop to one-on-ones or should you take a notebook? Personally, I've gone back and forth with taking notes on a one-on-one -on -one meeting. A laptop is a physical barrier to communication and a notepad can become a focal point. People might tend to read ahead or they might wonder, why are you writing that down? Also, my handwriting is terrible, but it's definitely good to keep track of one-on-one -on -one meetings. You can note things you wanna discuss ahead of the one-on-one -on -one meeting. You can record things agreed on, such as action items or long or short-term goals. Or you can look at notes from previous meetings and review those together. Now that most people are remote, things change a little bit. A Google Doc still works pretty well, but it can still become the focal point if everyone's sharing it on screen. It's naturally harder to discuss things that aren't on the agenda when you're all staring at it. So in summary, for me, keeping a Google Doc is good. In person, I try and leave the laptop or notebook closed until there's something to write down. And for remote, even though I have a Google Doc, I wouldn't screen share it and make it the main focus. So for most people, they'll generally defer to their manager to own and set the agenda of the meeting. But as you move up, you'll be setting the agenda yourself 
rather than your manager because you want to be making your manager's life easier. But why wait until you've moved up the ladder? This meeting is mostly about you and it's for you. You should own it. You should set the agenda and you should take notes and follow up. I've seen this done by junior engineers and it really puts them in a different light and shows their true potential. It also means they get the most out of the meeting. So hopefully this has given you some insights into what one-on-one -on -one meetings should look like. If you have different experience or different ideas, please leave a comment below. I'd love your feedback. Thanks for watching.